what is up everyone this is fox winter after the last lore video the majority of people voted on glory hammer and i am very happy to oblige because that's something i've picked apart a lot <laughs> if you're new to this glory hammer is a scottish swiss power metal band founded by christopher bows who most people know much better as the vocals for ailstorm <coughs> the band so far has three albums all of which tell a continuous story but the universe is so huge I couldn't squish it all into one video so this is part one of three dealing with the first of the albums Tales from the Kingdom of Five. Before we start quick trigger warning I'm not Scottish I'm not even a native English speaker so if I butcher any names sorry about that. That being said to understand the world the Glory Hammer universe is set in we have to know bit about Scotland as it is in real life. The title giving five is a council area and also a historic province in the southeast of Scotland between the Firth of Tay and Firth of Forth. Say that three times in a row. <laughs> in the Gloriamy universe, Five is an independent kingdom with the seat of governance in the capital Dundee, which is around here on Google Maps. The story of the first album is set in the year 1992. So we're still well in the era of fiefdoms and independent kingdoms. The album starts off with the prophecy of Anne's brother, which is a pretty ominous one-liner. The prophecy is written. Dundee will fall. It doesn't take long for the prophecy to come true when Dundee is attacked by an army of undead unicorns. They are led by a sorcerer, Zargothrax, who is our main villain, who promptly slaughters everyone in town. As they do. Zagrothorax rapes and kidnaps the princess, Iona MacDougall, before crowning himself the ruler of Fife. As you do. This brings us to the main character of our story, Angus MacFive I, portrayed by Thomas Winkler. Angus is the heir to the throne of Fife, so to avoid being captured, he has to flee. He does, however, swear revenge with the words, I will make Zagrothorax die. Admittedly, Angus doesn't seem to be the poetic sword here, but he's not going into a rap battle, so let's let it slide. As the hero he is, Angus is now sent on a mythical quest to retrieve items that will help him recapture the kingdom. His first destination is a cave far in the north, in what in real life would likely be the Cairngorms National Park, which is around here. There it is said lies a magical weapon that the gods will only grant to a pure-hearted hero. If you've paid attention so far, you're likely not surprised it's called the Hammer of Glory. So far, so good. Hammer in hand, or probably a bag, I guess. Angus rides all the way back to the forest of Strathclyde, where he finds a village of wizards. There's no forest in present time, nor any wizards, but at least a tech university. Same thing, I guess. The wizards look into their crystal balls and tell him where to go next. Where? I have no idea. The song speaks of an enchanted chamber and mountains again which is about as specific as the time traveler warning us something bad will happen in 2020. So in the best case, it's a few miles tops. In the worst case, poor Angus has to haul his still frozen ass right back to where he came from. Wherever this cave is, in there Angus is faced with quote unquote mirror and fire. First, Angus has to battle a demon and then the dragon he has been looking for. When he finally defeats the dragon, it turns into his body and joins him on his quest. Because as everyone knows, nothing makes friends like bonking them over the head real good. On his journey, Angus has a dream about the last artifact he will need to defeat Zargothrax, so he mounts a dragon to go find it. On this trip, Angus laments Iona's fate and reiterates his devotion to saving her. Iona is currently encased in ice down in the dungeons, but trusts Angus is coming to save her, and he is certain that the Hammer of Glory will be able to break the spell. I'll omit the jokes you can make about hammers and frozen women. The last artifact is the so-called Amulet of Justice, which is located at the bottom of Lake Rannoch, which is around here in the map. Angus dives into the lake and retrieves it without any major resistance really. Three artifacts collected, it's time to dry off and kick wizard ass. He is assisted by this by the warriors of Krail. Krail is a small town on the coast, right here, and since horses are totally overrated, the Knights of Krail have gone and tamed giant eagles. Which might explain why they've allegedly never lost a fight. I mean, eagles are already scary when they're normal sized, so I can't blame them. 
The song specifically names them turning around the siege of Don Keld. This doesn't mean anything right now, but keep it in mind when we talk about the other albums. Finally, we reach the climax of the story, the great battle we have all been waiting for. In true power metal style, the song is called Epic Rage of Furious Thunder. Angus atop his dragon leads his army of eagle warriors from Krail against the forces occupying Dundee. On the way, they are joined by one more ally, the so-called barbarian warrior of Unst. Unst is a small island in the North Sea, all the way up here, so it's not super surprising he's running a bit late here. He's another recurring character that we'll go into more thoroughly in the next album. The main battle is fought in Dunfermline, or in other words, at the other end of five. With the Knights of Krayl as allies, it's looking good, but Angus still has an oath to fulfill. Like wizards do, however, Zarkothrax has holed up in his wizard tower northwest of Dundee. Never mind that we've never heard of the tower before, it's there now, okay? The tower is too steep to climb, and apparently having a dragon doesn't do the trick either, so another plan is needed. Enter main character number four, Ralathor the Hermit. Without spoiling too much, Ralathor is, in my opinion, by far the most mysterious and interesting character of them all. To quote from the song directly, Through the ancient tunnels the warriors make way, into a darkened cavern beneath the fortress great. Led by a hermit, Ralathor his name, the way to the castle his secret to betray. Why does Ralathor know this? Where does he come from and what's his relation to Zargothrax? I wish I could say this is going to be solved, but it's not. Three albums in and Ralathor is and continues to be a lot of speculation under a blue cloak. But anyhow. Now, finally in the bad guy's headquarters, Angus faces off Zargothrax man to man. And it goes about as well as you'd expect for the antagonist. The Hammer of Glory is a magical weapon capable of blocking dark magic. And if you're a wizard, you're likely not prone to do hand to hand combat on a regular basis. Defeated, Zargothrax falls into a conveniently placed pool of liquid ice, the same substance that Princess Iona was imprisoned in, which encases and preserves his body without killing him. And just to answer the question that everybody asks when they listen to this for the first time, there is actually a real-life equivalent. It's called super ionic water, and it's not really a thing on Earth, but can exist on other planets where temperature and density are high enough. And more broadly, there's also such a thing as amorphous ice, which sort of fits the description. But I'm not a physicist, so let's skip the details. With Zargothrax gone, Angus steps out of the tower and raises the Amulet of Justice. The light from the magical amulet dissolves the dark forces strangling the kingdom and releases the unicorns, and I quote, from their spell of undeath. It also frees Iona from her icy prison, finally restoring balance. All is well. Sort of. In the last bit of the album, a little song called Wizards, exclamation mark, a bunch of uh, wizards, obviously, look into the future and see a final galactic battle between good and evil. But that's a story for the next album. It's a pretty standard fairy tale by all intents and purposes. You have a bad guy, a hero, and a damsel in distress. According to Chris Bowes, his outline originally covered 21 albums, but at the current rate of production, I'm going to give that an A. I wouldn't complain, but I'm really not seeing it. In this album, it's admittedly still somewhat confusing who is who, because there's new names being thrown around every five seconds, but it's a great first step to set up the world. If you watch the videos, you can also see that every band member has their own character and costume, and everything gets a bit clearer as the story progresses. Of course, since this is told as a legend, there's a lot of logical mistakes, and if I went into every cross-reference and open question, this video would be longer than the entire album. But since I have spent far too long picking this apart, here are my top three questions. Number one, Iona's role is not really clear in the entire thing. She's called the princess, no further detail, and is apparently Angus's girlfriend or fiance. So this leaves us with several possibilities. Either Dundee is in fact not yet part of Five and only becomes the capital after their marriage, but that leaves the question why Angus is so passionate about Dundee 
as his land, and why is there in the first place? Or Iona is not the princess of Dundee slash five, but of a neighboring kingdom, which begs the question, why is she there? All around confusing, and we've never gotten an answer to that. And you know what's also confusing? Topic number two, the entirety of fantasy Scotland's geography. In the Unicorn Invasion of Dundee, the first song, Zargothrax is said to cross the river Tafe from the mountains. Problem is, the mountains are north of Dundee, and the Tay is in the south. It's not physically impossible, of course, but it seems like a bit of a needless detour. Oh, and this doesn't get better in the following albums either, so I'm pretty sure they all just flunked geography. And number three, what happened to the unicorns? The amulet freed the unicorns from their spell of undeath, quote end quote. But what exactly does that mean? To make something undead, it needs to be dead first. And these particular unicorns in the official merch are certainly more close to zombies than, for example, vampires. Wouldn't they just fall over? I mean, if not anything else, that seems like a bit of a hassle to clean up, right? I could go on, but nobody's listening anymore, so... Next up is Space 1992, Rise of the Chaos Wizards, to see what happens next, and shit's gonna get real. If you enjoyed this, feel free to give me a like, comment with your thoughts, and suggest things to look out for next time. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Angus is the heir to the tr- Yeah, you can tell I can't speak English either.